Alright. Take four. I'm really dumb. Here we go. Sindragosa teaching you guys how to do it. Short, short version. Sindragosa dragon. 38 million health. Frost aura has cleave. You see cleave? Cleave is up here. You don't want to stand here because you will get cleaved and you will die. You don't want to stand back here because you'll get tail whipped and you will go flying across the room. And of course you don't want to stand in front of here because it will breathe frost on you and you will die. Also present during the fight, a frost aura that will hit everybody in the stage. Alright, phase one, positioning. Alright, on pull, tank goes from here, tanks him, brings it, turns dragon to side, so dragon is facing to the left of stairs. Simple. The melee run from the top of the stairs, they run down to the stairs, so they stand at the side so that they're not in cleave range and they're not in tail's wipe range, but they're right here in this big chunky area doing damage. Alright, ranged and healers and squishies and other tomato looking people, you stand at the start of the stairs and you go down to the bottom near the bottom here and then you start doing your damage. Whenever a melee person hits dragon, there is a 20% chance to stack this debuff called, called Permeating Chill. Okay, so you get permeating chill, you take damage, yada yada yada. You don't want any more than four stacks. You get more than four stacks of that, then you're fucking stupid and you deserve to die. For range, you get this thing called Unchained Magic and it targets certain range. Not all the range, but when you do get it, you don't want to cast anything unless you absolutely have to. If you do have to cast something, make it count. If you don't, well, you have a chance of blowing yourself up at the end. Partway through phase one, she will do a pull and everybody gets sucked in up into her butthole like that and then... You, everyone needs to start running back towards the stairs, everybody, the range, you gotta go ahead towards the bottom of the stairs here, melee, you gotta start running down here too. Because a few seconds after she does the pull, she will do an explosion, and what the explosion does is about 25k damage to everyone within 25 yards. Or something like that, it does a lot, it hurts. You don't want to be in there, your healers are already pissed off as is because they're doing this fight. So, cut them some slack, run out, uh, tank, yeah, carp, you can run out too. But afterwards you go back and then everybody goes back and you do the same thing, you keep damaging until she lifts off into the air. Which will then lead us to phase two. Okay, now I'm going over phase two. Phase two is just like Sephira and she's gonna take off and then she's gonna ice tomb people. The ice tomb people will become marked at the very start. So at the start of the phase two it'll be like, okay, you're gonna get ice tomb, you're gonna get ice tomb, you're gonna get ice tomb, and hell, you're gonna get ice tomb and maybe we'll ice tomb carb too. Ice Tomb people need to run to the bottom of the stairs, stand at the bottom, and they need to make a certain pattern. The pattern we're going with is what Tank Spot had, which is like a 3-2 a pattern. So, this is only one person, it's not all a melee, so don't be fucking stupid. If you stand next to other people, you will chain the tomb on them, and then we'll have more of these blocks to deal with. The blocks are all... The blocks are about 400k in health, and they're kind of hard to take down. So what we want to do is get these back two together... And these two people will kind of like share a tomb and they'll get some splash damage, but they'll survive. But we use all of our damaging abilities to break them up. So, this is what the tomb will look like. Alright, so people are tombed. Oh no, they're in the ice cream cone. So we take that and then what everyone needs to do is the... Everybody needs to get behind them. Gotta get behind them over here. And then what we're gonna do is everybody starts DPSing the crap out of the back ones. So the back two need to come down as fast as possible. We want to free them up, okay? At the same time, Cinderella will start dropping frost bombs. She will drop four of them, so you see a frost bomb come, and it will be designated in an area like that. And then it'll be a big swirly frost thing. Hopefully, by the time the first or second one comes out, these front two ones will have been destroyed already, so these people will be freed. Not for the okay, so basically, when you see a frost bomb over there, everybody needs to kind of huddle up behind here and line aside it. If not, they're going to get exploded because once you see the little swirly thing go by, then the actual explosion happens and you can line the sight it by standing over here on this side and pew pew pew, you don't get hit by any of this stuff. And then you keep d DPSing and you want to try free one person at a time. You don't want to do all three because if you do all three, then when the other three of these frost bombs come out, you won't have anything to line the sight and we will all die and it will be sad. Now if we don't get these people out, right after phase 2 ends and they will start to suffocate and they will die inside their ice block and then we will lose them and they will be sad and so what we want to do is we want to make sure we get all these down in a timely manner after phase 2 is over not too fast not too slow just like Goldilocks just right
Okay, and that just basically gets repeated over and over and over and over and over and over and over again until phase three, which is at 35% of Sinjuko's health, which I will not reset all this stupid crap for. Okay, phase three, same thing, phase one, just no taking off, okay? And then every now and then she will choose someone and they will have to run away. So like this guy, he'll get a mark on him and they have to run to this side. And then they, what happens is they'll get ice tombed again and then we'll have ice tombs. At the same time, we're doing this ground phase. But this tomb is good because she also increased all magic damage done to everybody by 15% and it's like a debuff. So all you gotta do is you run behind, you line of sight while you're destroying the ice tomb and hey look the stacks fall off. Along with that of course Carb can't be eating that much shit because I know he's good but he's not that good guys. So what we do is we have Zen come in here, he's the little panda thing and he'll off tank. And so what will happen is we'll go, hey Carb needs to drop his stack so when that happens Zen will taunt off, Carb will run back here. And he will drop his stacks, then he'll run back out, and then he'll start tanking. And if Zen needs to drop his stacks, he'll do the same. And he'll go here, he'll come back here, drop it off while he's destroying the tomb. Bang, bang, bang. He'll come back out. And if we absolutely need to, we I've seen some guilds use a third tank. So we have Kaister here. Ha, ha, ha. I'm a death knight. Ha, ha, ha. So he'll run out here, and he'll stand on this side. And then if Carb needs to drop his stack, he'll come out here. The reason why these are the third one is, like, say... For example, oh my god, what happened? Oh, Zen is going to become an ice cream cone, so Kaiser's got to come up here and be like, I'm going to tank it, I'm the man. And then Carl will be back here, oh, I dropped my stacks, I'll come back out here. We break the thing, break Zen out of the stack here, he'll come back out here. And then the melee comes back out here, we'll go back there, and then the range stay here, and then we'll make it more range, we'll have another range, then we got another tomato, tomato goes there, another tomato goes there. Okay, and we keep doing that, we keep doing that for 10 fucking minutes until it's dead. And after that, then we'll do Lich King, and I'll try to not go insane, make another short video like this. Okay, bye. We did it.